Good morning, everyone. It is Stephen and Andrea from Pin in the Atlas. Look at that wonderful view. I know it's a bit of a smoky summer morning, but the temperature is absolutely perfect. We're high in the mountains of Montana, and we're going to explore a ghost town that was founded in 1884 as a company town. The population at its peak was 3,000, and it was once called Montana's Silver Queen. Let's explore. All right, now this is something more familiar to us. The remains of a stamp mill. You can see there's still some of the, the big timbers left over where the stamps would have been. So this is pretty large. It, it's comparable to, uh, to Blair. Yeah, this is, it used to be a 20 stamp mill. Then it was replaced by an 80 stamp mill in 1885 and then in 1888 a 100 stamp mill was built. Ah, oh, there we go. I have a fun fact about this. A telegram was delayed. It was to tell the workers to stop working but the miners carried on working and with the last blast on the last shift uncovered the mother load of 40 million dollars worth of silver that was back in the 1880s. So this little building not much left to it it could have been uh, just a workshop generator house something of that nature got an old pipe in here and a bunch of just nails on the the wall where things would have hung up the most impressive part, let's see if I can do this correctly, is the waste rock piles. I'll just kind of start here. I'm going to go up and investigate all of this. But all of these, it just, this whole mountainside. And you can see up there in the center of the screen, there was a stone wall bunch of ruins down here but it also continues down over the valley there's tons of little piles there continuing on down here and down into the valley that way and as you can see there's more structures down there for us to investigate at the bottom of this very imposing structure you can see at the bottom, just to the right of Andrea, those are two ore chutes. I found some square nails. Really? Lots of them. I don't particularly want to venture in because I don't want to damage any of the structures and it looks a little bit precarious. But hey, look at these. All square nails. Oh wow, the whole board. So I believe this was originally built in 1875. That's really neat to see that many just uh, in one board and then... And there's, uh, they're everywhere. Yeah, they're all every of these. Every single one. That's pretty cool, isn't pretty it? Pretty much almost every single one I can see is a square nail. And those all oh, shoots and the little chipmunks come to say hello. Climbed up to the top to get a better view. Still not a way in. We wouldn't anyway. That's, uh, that looks really rickety. But very impressive. So that's the main shaft of the mine, which plummets 1,500 feet down. There was a massive mill that encased this whole area, but as you can see, it's all completely fallen down. And a lot of it has fallen down into the shaft. But miners would work three Eight hour shifts, six days a week. There's just scattered remnants of buildings everywhere. You can still make out on that wall that's leaning the different cubbies for various types of parts, pieces, what have you. They're all in a big old pile now. At the far end, we've got this very neat brick and stone structure.
Very simple. Let's see in the back. Got a vent here. And a vent through the ceiling. And just opposite the brick structure was the first building we saw down below. And you can make it out now. These are war chutes. Let me see, there's one, two, four of them. So that's neat. Oh, this has still got the metal slide on it. So this lovely stone building here was the superintendent's house. And the front door is wide open. So I guess we should hop inside and take a look. Yeah, it was built in 1889 and this road was called Silk Stocking Row. Mm. Look at that wallpaper, isn't that amazing? That's cool. Okay, lots of rat poop and the floorboards are a little bit iffy. Yeah, falling through over there. Yeah. And it's a shame the pesky vandals have uh, graffitied. Wow, this is really neat. Be very careful of my steps here. Into the next room. Very large, the ceilings are very tall. And it's two stories. I don't know where the stairwell would be. Back room here. Continues around. Where does this go? Hello. <laughs> so you can see the wallpaper on this as well. Oops. Sorry, I just hit a loose... Uh... Loose floorboard? Yeah. This looks like it had shelving. Yeah, so this could have been the, uh, the pantry. Mm-hmm. Back through to the main room. And what's in here? Just another very large room. We're being watched. I'm zoomed in a little bit, but you can see up on the mountain, we were up there earlier. That's all those waste rock piles coming all the way down here. And then this is another. Huge mine shaft. Yeah. So this one went down approximately 1,845 feet. Something like that, yeah. So this was a... Uh... Oh. They filled it in. Now it looks like it goes down approximately 15 feet. <laughs> yeah, that's filled in. They've done uh, cement work all along the sides. Well, I guess because also this, this grate doesn't look like it's going to last too much longer. Yeah, I wouldn't want to stand in the middle. No. So we do have a few other items we can take a look at. Just a massive pile of pipe here. And at least this one. Got a few bits on there. Some uh, plumber's tape, looks like. And then this over here. This look like some bull wheels. And these two guys right here can correct me if I'm wrong. These look like the elevators. See there's the the wire on the top there. Cable to go through. And put some maybe supplies, the ore cart up in here possibly. And then below attached the cage for the, the miners themselves, or maybe it was reversed and this is where all the tools went. 
but there's two of them side by side that is really neat there's looks like some more modern ones over there and then that huge ore chute there we go I was gonna say that's an ore car but uh, don't see any of the other framing around it so that possibly had a different use but then there's these are those other two uh, elevator cars like I said these ones look more modern all metal very cool and this building here unsure of this one maybe Richard you can help us out but I'm gonna take a wild guess that this could be like a changing room or you know where you you hang up your your grubbies because there's four of them four individual ones but they also have like a false floor I don't uh, don't know what that's all about and then these old pair of jeans don't think those are uh, Levi's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars where they wouldn't still be there then you got so they're all separated except for this one had uh, this one was open so this is the mining company office and as far as I can tell this was the brick vault used to be a two-story building and did you know that the last superintendent had a 16 foot by 16 foot hot water plunge a drying room and a reading room built for the workers of the sh of the mine and apparently this helped the miners from contracting pneumonia oh that's pretty cool true story one of the things that I always, I mean, we both think about is you, you get to a building like this, it's a, it was somebody's home, and you always kind of wonder who lived here. I can answer that. It was a lady by the name of May, and she was the last resident here, and she died in 1969 at the age of 75. Oh. She spent many, many years up here as a watchman and also as a water commissioner. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. You're welcome. We'll take a little peek inside. Well, can you imagine being the only person living up here? Again, we're miles in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Up a rugged road. And it's, uh, the town below is not too big, so... This is really neat. Do you think that could have been like a cellar or do you think that's just foundations that have caved in? Well, that's why I was looking at that pipe. Uh, I don't know if there went, water was feeding through that and maybe over time it had been leaking and caused the subsidence of the ground there. Well, as you can see that side of the house through, uh, that's just falling away. This mm. is pretty neat. I bet a uh, well, bird or pack rat's making it. Oh, no, it's pack rat's making a nest up there. Have you seen the pretty wallpaper? Very neat. And then you can get a good look of how this is built right into the side of the mountain. And wonder what was back here. Let's get some lights on. I think that was her pantry, wasn't it? Yeah. So you got some shelves. Bunch of uh, rat droppings in there now. Mouse droppings. Well, those are huge. So, the size of jelly beans. Cute little bird's nest. How cool. Look, at, bird's nest. Oh. look how tiny that is. Here along the outside now, this was that room I pointed out earlier. I said it's completely falling down. And then we're back over here. We think that's where the, the storage was on the other side. 
little porch back here, the roof's caved in. And then, uh, what's that up there? No trip would be complete without a trip to the outhouse. Oh, there we go. A double. So if she lived here by her house herself, why did she have a double? <laughs> one for number one, one for number two? Maybe. And then back over this side, there's some more uh, structures that are no more. This amazing building right here, they just don't build them like this anymore. This was the miners? Yeah, the oh. miners union hall. It was uh, three stories. It even had a theater and they used to put 500 folding chairs up. 500, it just goes to show you how big it was. Yeah. And now there's only remnants of the first and partial of the second floor. So these would have been just massive front openings here. I don't... So it was built in 1890 and it cost $23,000. And that was back then. Yeah. Give you a sense it also, how far back it goes. You can just see the the wood that still remains in the second story windows. So it used to also hold a library in here too. And uh, the main hall had 18 feet, 18 feet ceiling. Wow. Or an 18 foot ceiling, I should say. And they used to hold dances here. So opposite the miners hall, there used to be a newspaper and we're on Main Street now and they had obviously loads of shops including 18 saloons I believe and then boarding houses, restaurants. There's even a hospital somewhere here and they used to have a Masonic Hall and an Odd Fellows Hall. Fortunately this one has fallen down but the one next to it is still really well preserved. Yeah, I don't know what this is. I mean, we're on Main Street, so I'm wondering, I wouldn't have thought it was a cabin. Although mm. saying that, bed. Hmm. There's an outlet for the fireplace or for the stove, I should say. Yeah, because I think it'd be way too small for some type of a shop, so. So prime location, the resident of this place, on Main Street. This looks like a very heavily fortified building. I'm guessing it's the... Uh... It's the bank, ah. and it's the only bank in town. I would imagine that this is just the safe that remains. Yeah, otherwise it would be an extremely small bank. But you know, the walls are super thick. We got metal in the doorway here and lining the roof. So I think you're right. 